Hi, I'm Alive. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be giving you a tour of my entire orchid collection. I do own over 50 orchids, but like 10 of them are just Phalaenopsis, and not all of them are in Spike, so I'm only gonna be showing you my in Spike Phalaenopsis, along with the rest of the 41 orchids that I own. Nearly all of those other 41 are completely different species, so I'm going to be showing you about 41 different plants. And I do just wanna address the elephant in the room. Yesterday, the video that I posted was the plant theft video, and I took it out of the intro to that video because I didn't think it was a big deal. Also, I want to apologize for how puffy my face looks, but I did have a tiny rash at the beginning of filming that video. And as the day progressed, it got worse and worse and worse. And it got to the point where uh, I'm gonna just put a trigger warning. It looks really gross, but this is what my face looked like at 10 p.m. last night. <sighs> my face has gotten better, but it's extremely swollen. And my face is very round right now, and I don't know what's causing it. I went to the doctor, they did a bunch of blood tests, and I'll find out hopefully later this week. But I do have an EpiPen now. <laughs> I've never owned an EpiPen before, and I have a couple other medications that I'm taking. So if I appear different or seem different, then that is why. And you're probably like, Ashley, go to bed. Why are you filming a video? This is all I want to do. <laughs> I have wanted to film this video for a really long time and I planned on filming it today and by golly, I'm gonna film this video today. I hope that you can put up with me in pajamas and hair craziness because I just really wanna show you literally every single orchid that I own because I'm so proud of them. Orchids probably are taking up about a fourth of my entire collection right now. They're all so pretty and I love them so much and I just wanna share them all with you. So yeah, that's what the video is gonna be about. I hope that you stick around for the orchid tour and let's just get into it. So I'm gonna try to do these orchids by genus. I might not be able to quite do that just in case you didn't know because I actually didn't, which sounds so silly. Orchids are actually a familia, not a genus. So when people are like, my favorite genus is orchids, that's technically not correct, but it's really hard to say like, my favorite genus is Restrepia, because no one knows what a Restrepia is. I'm really excited specifically by the Restrepia genus, the Plerothallus genus, and the Bulbophyllum genus. So we're just gonna get into it. I'm gonna try to do these in order of genus, but I don't know if that's necessarily possible because there's just so many of them. I might forget one. Let's start out with Plerothallus. So this is my absolute favorite orchid that I own actually, and I'm very, very excited to announce that it's actually putting out a brand new petiole and leaf. And this is Plerothallus paragensis. This is just the most beautiful house plant I think I've actually ever seen in my whole life. I got this from Orchid Dynasty. He's the best guy, he has a good jiggle. And then right here, you can see his new uh, leaves coming in and that leaf my guy is mine. I made him put out that leaf. I love him so much. He's so funky. He reminds me of my cutie QNC, which is actually why I bought him. I think just because it was so nifty looking. Plerothallus paragensis. The next and last Plerothallus that I own would be Plerothallus cylindrica. This Plerothallus I got in a mystery box that I ordered from Etsy and it is doing incredible. It's very, very cardboardy. The leaves are just pretty incredible. They're not super interesting looking leaves. This isn't one that I think I necessarily would have bought for myself if it didn't come in a mystery box. And I do think this one would be fun to mount upside down. Uh, I think that that would look a lot cooler. Plerothallus cylindrica. Okay, the next genus we're gonna get into is Restrepia, which is I think probably right now my favorite genus. And first I'll show you the most boring Restrepia that I have, but I think it's also either my favorite or my second favorite. And then that is this Restrepia. This is Restrepia striata and it just looks so wild. I love all of the little loose sprays coming off of it. It's always giving me new leaves, which is so nice. All those little things right there are little new leaves. And we actually have a couple cakeys happening, which is fun. So I'll be able to split and share this plant with my friends probably in the next few months. All those little light green leaves in there are all brand new, including this one right here. Next we have Restrepia radulaflora which is this guy. And I actually took a little cakey of this guy that was growing off the top and I gave it to another orchid collector friend that I have here in Boise. This orchid is super sun stressed and it puts out amazing flowers. That's why I liked it. I think it's cool. It's a, it's a more sparsely growing Restrepia than the other ones. The next and last Restrepia is a Restrepia I actually got a few days ago and this is Restrepia sanguina. And this is a gorgeous blood red Restrepia. Really, it's just incredible. The whole thing is basically just this purple 
maroon red color. It's just so good. Even the stems are blood red and the flowers are red as well. Uh, it's really, really nice. And I love the little bit of moss he comes in. It has these little friends sticking up out of it. I think they're so cute. I don't know what they are, but they're cute. That's this one. This is probably my second favorite Restrepia that I own. I'd like to own more Restrepia, but they are decently expensive. That's what's nice about Plerothallis is that they're not as expensive, but they are kind of harder to find. Less people uh, tend to carry them. Okay, so moving on from Restrepia, now we're going to get into Bulbophyllum, which are some of the funkiest orchids I think that exist. I'll show you my favorite one first. This, not what your typical Bulbophyllum would look like, so don't expect that they're all gonna be this cool, but this is Bulbophyllum monoliforme. It is extremely little. It is a miniature Bulbophyllum species. It is a climbing species or a shingling species, and it is really that little. Here's, I mean, my you can see my fingers for scale. It is just... <laughs> absolutely itty bitty teeny tiny i love how it grows i think it reminds me of a hoya which is why i like it so much hoya i think are my favorite actual genus of plants care for this one is really easy you just gotta wait for it to kind of like prune up and then you give it some water and it's actually been growing in my care that little teeny tiny top dot up there is new <laughs> which is nice but yeah, it's definitely a very goofy looking orchid, not something you'd really think of as an orchid. The next Bulbophyllum I wanna show you is Bulbophyllum elasoglossum. And this is a really funky Bulbophyllum. He grows in super duper weird. <laughs> and it's just like one bulb and one leaf and then stem. He's actually putting out another new one right now, right here. And I'm very excited to see how that turns into a bulb. Oh, and we're getting another one again right here. Oh, that's so exciting. I didn't even notice that until right now. I just think that they're so cool. Ugh, oh, how could you not love that? I love it so much. This is Bulbophyllum taiwansi. And he, this is another miniature Bulbophyllum. It's a little bit different than the Monoliforme because the Monoliforme doesn't have these little leaves but you can kind of see the little tiny bulbs sitting in the moss right there with the little leaves sticking up out of it. This is a much bigger board. It's about the size of my hand, but the bulbs are just very, very little. He is a very cute guy. Actually needs to be watered soon. So I think I'll probably do that here. You can see the bulbs really well on the side right here. Yeah, those ones. Aw. The next Bulbophyllum I want to show you is Bulbophyllum saltatorium is this guy he's actually putting out a new leaf again right up here this is new in my care uh but he's like this like crushed raisin star fruit kind of looking bulb a uh, very very peculiar there's about six bulbs on here in total maybe maybe seven maybe some hiding in the moss and it's just a vibe <laughs> i just love how funky the bulbs look they look like little shapes look like little like gummies, like dried out raisin fruits almost. And I just think that they're really cool. So that was the last of the Bulbophyllum. So now I'm gonna tell you about Lepenthes. Lepenthes are these gorgeous little baby orchids, super little. Uh, the other one that I have right now doesn't have any leaves. That one has been very, uh, very difficult to take care of. Uh, but these ones right now are actually flowering. I think it will be a little difficult for you to tell just because they really are so little. That's it compared to the top of my finger. It's got a cool little texture going on to it. And I think that that's just really nice. The next genus, which I wanna show you, which I also have only one of again, is Psychopsis lemingii. This actually used to be classified as an Oncindium, but it is now a Psychopsis. This is gorgeous. It's a little shingling plant. And again, I bought this one because it reminded me kind of of Hoya. This one is also giving me new leaves. So I'm really glad that I have the uh, Botanicus terrarium to put everything in because it really does help me out so much. But it has these little uh, red spots on them and I think that they're really nice. The copses are great. I'd love to get some more of them, but they're a popular genus because the foliage are cool, so. All right, next let's talk about Orangus. This is Orangus modesta. This is a super cute little guy. And I think he is just a doable. He's cute. He's actually putting out a new leaf right now, which is very nice. Then I have this little Orangus luteo alba variety rhodosticta. And this is a really cute one. He's got kind of a different type of leaf than the other Orangus that I'm used to seeing. They're a lot more thinner and they're almost a little bit more like glossy. I think that I like the look of this one better and the flowers on this one specifically are just really, really incredible. I got this from a local seller and I mounted it like a two nights ago. Now let's talk about the Dendrobium. Dendrobium are really not my favorite. In fact, I think I only have three. And one of them isn't technically Dendrobium. It is a different genus, but it looks so much like one. I'm just gonna include them in the same category. First one that I have is Dendrobium teratifolium. That is this guy. 
and he is a weird one. This is another one that came in the mystery box, probably not one I would have ever bought for myself had I had the opportunity, but I do think he's fun. I appreciate that he's mounted on nearly nothing, nearly just the wood alone. Normally you have like a ton of moss behind it, but this one really is just like literally cocoa coir vines and wood, and I think that that's pretty funny. The next dendrobium I have is Dendrobium Aberrans. This is one I got from a local seller, and I did buy this one because of its flowers specifically, and this one sends dresses really well as well. I haven't been keeping this one in the sun though, so it's probably why you're not seeing anything. This actually turns bright purple, which I think is really, really nice. The last dendrobium that I have that's not really technically a dendrobium, it is really a different species or a different genus. I think it's pronounced Miramichella, Mir Miramichella. It's actually Myrmicophila, which is one of the funniest names I've ever heard, ever. <laughs> exaltata, which used to be uh, Schomburgia exaltata, which is this. I bought this thinking it was a miniature orchid. It is extremely large, especially for what I was thinking. Uh, the, the product photo made it look very little, and in fact, it is very large. I think if it was this large, I don't think I would have bought it. <laughs> okay, the next genus we're gonna talk about is Catalea. I only have two Catalea. My first one is a true Catalea, and it's probably one of my favorite orchids that I have. And this is Catalea Scarlet Imp, and this is what it looks like. It has really, really nice uh, foliage, super little, and it's actually got a blue tint to the foliage, which I find honestly just like really, really, really nice. I love how tiny the leaves are. It is a miniature Catalea, and this is really like what I look for. <laughs> in plants is like, or in orchids, is something that's just little and tiny and precious, something that I can take care of without having to stress out too much. Then I have this Catalea which is actually not technically a Catalea, but it is a subgenus. So I don't know its actual uh, genus name, but this is a Hyang Sing Starlight Pink Lady Catalea and it's much larger. I mean, in comparison, you can still see that it's very similar. We actually are also getting a new little growth point in the back here, which is super nice. Yeah, this is the guy. I bought it because of how cool that its foliage looks and it's also got extremely hard leaves which I think is fun. All right, before we start to move on to the Paphiopetalums, we actually have about, I think, two more orchids left to talk about before we're in your guys' probably favorite genus. And this is Macropodanthus cutsii. It's very similar to the Orangus, except it's a little different. I bought this one just because I've never seen it before. It does get a really cool flower. Uh, but I really do just like how cute and mounted this one looks. That's All right, and the last orchid that I'm gonna show you uh, up close like this is this Brassavola, uh, I think Nidosa. It's uh, very sun-stressed, you're gonna see it. It's gonna look very purple, it's because it's been right in the window. So it's extremely sun-stressed. And this is a Brassavola. It puts out just the most adorable little uh, flowers. I think that they're just incredible. Uh, and this is a miniature species. The Brassavola that I have uh, hanging up in moss right now, which is Brassavola Little Stars, which I'll show you a little insert of right here, is a much larger version of this. In fact, the flowers look nearly identical, even though they are not. All right, we're gonna talk Phalaenopsis before we get into the Paphiopetalums, which are probably your guys' most favorite. We'll start off with the coolest Phalaenopsis, which is Phalaenopsis Schillariana which is this cool little dude. This is a patterned leaf. Uh, it's purple, it's like very fully purple. I'm actually gonna move this over a little bit so you can see better. It's very, very purple with just some really nice uh, patterns on there. I just think it's great. It also puts out a great flower, but Really, this one is prized for its foliage. And it's a species orchid, which means it's not a hybrid. Right now, I'm just gonna really quickly insert the three mounted Phalaenopsis that I have that I think are really cool. The one at the top, which I believe is some type of cool hybrid. Uh, these are actually two orchids there together, and one of them is in bloom. Second one is a really cool orchid. I think it's called Jahau's Pink Lady, Pink Girl or something. That one's also really nice, mounted that one. And then the last one, I don't know what it's called because I got it from Albertsons, but I picked it out to mount because it has really cool little leaves. And the orchid that we passed over right in the middle there is actually a really cool little orchid, which you'll see the name of on the screen right now because I can't remember it. And now, I do have a couple other Phalaenopsis around my house, probably like four or five, but none of them are in bloom, so I'm just gonna show you the two that are in bloom down here. This is the first one. It is just gorgeous. I'm really not a flower girl, but I feel like I'm starting to become one because having flowers in this room has only made it honestly feel so much better. 
Here's the flower up close on this one. This is called Phalaenopsis Shoe Long Beauty. Three different plants in this pot and the roots themselves just run wild. The whole thing really is just so pretty. And it has three flower spikes, which of course are incredible. Phalaenopsis Yeso Purple. Yeso and purple. Um, not yellow and purple, Yeso. Here's the flowers. They're kind of like the blotchy type. And the actual petioles of the flowers are also blotchy. I don't know if that's really gonna read, but. And also the cool thing with Phalaenopsis is that depending on where you point the light at them, that is where the flowers will turn to, which I think is super fun. Wow. And then here's the leaves. The leaves are pretty big and they are very sun stressed. You can kind of see how purple they are. I also really like how crazy this one's aerial roots are. I think it's cool. This is what it looks like from a distance. I think it's very nice. It is now the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm gonna show you all my Papio Petalums. And we're gonna start with Papio Petalum Liberty Taiwan. This one actually got root rot, so I'm currently re-rooting this one in perlite and moss. And I'm very sad, because this is the first orchid I think I've had that developed an issue, and it's because I overwatered it, which sucks, <laughs> sucks major, because this one was one of my favorite ones that I got. I got it because it reminds me so much Maybe Burl Marks Fantasy. Then I have Paphio Petalum Red Shift. And that is this. So we actually have some red lines that run through the leaves or purple lines that are running through the leaves. And then the detail on the leaves up close is just really nice. Wow, that's incredible, huh? I think that, that is just wonderful. The next one I have to show you is actually in bloom right now. This is Paphio Petalum Venustum Album Pippin Limely. And here's the flower. He's bouncing. Isn't that just nice? That's the flower. And here is the foliage. How cute, right? Very nice. Love it. Love, love, love. This is not one I probably would have ever bought if I hadn't seen it like right about to flower. I am glad that I did buy it because it pushes me out of my comfort zone. But this one actually has glossy leaves and the Papio Petalums that I like really all have like very textured, rough leaves almost like there's a i can't remember the name of it again it'll be on the screen but there is a type of material that you can put over things it's very like it's like a fake texture almost but this one's really nice and it's flowers way nicer than i thought it was gonna be then we have one of my orchid dynasty orchids this is paphia petalum malapoensi and this is a hybrid of j number one with green apple this is our foliage i think it's very nice it's gonza Organza, organza, organza material is what it looks like. It really looks like these ones are covered with organza and they're also crinkled. That's just like how they are. I think that if you were to compare these two foliages, this one is just so much cooler. I think it's cool that other people own orchids just because they like how it flowers, but I really want to like my plants all of the time, not just when they're flowering. So I try to only buy Papio Petalums that I think I'm really gonna like even when they are not in flower. And this was one of the first ones I ever bought from Orchid Dynasty in Salt Lake City. And the back looks so cool. Very, very deep purple. The next one I got, I got recently from Path Paradise. This is Papia Petalum Mystically Contrasting, which is incredible. This one again, not super big fan of its foliage. I think that it's fine enough but I really did buy this one for its flower. Uh, you can see on the screen why, and I just think it's perfect. I, I don't think I've ever seen a cooler looking orchid flower in my life. All right, then we have Papiopidium Linley Kupowitz, which is this monster. He looks so cool. This is another one of the ones I got from Orchid Dynasty, and he's just really cool. I think that he is just really cool. I think this is probably, if not my favorite, Paphia Petalum. It has three plants in here and then a couple keikis that are happening, which is nice. Very cool, I love it so much, wow. So this one is Paphia Petalum Mabel. It's another one that I got from Path Paradise. It's much, much smaller here. I'll show you, for example, the size difference. Mabel is really nice. I love this one's flower, actually. I love, I mean, I love, I love this. I love that a lot. But this one has an extremely nice flower, which I take a lot of joy in. And this one's cool because it's got like the organza material on it, but then it's also like a little glossy. Then we have Paphia Petalum Petite Paradise. This one is really just glossy, but it's glossy in all of the best ways. Plus it is so little. Uh, in comparison to the last one, it is much smaller than the last one alone. 
and it's just really cute. The underneath of the leaves are also purple on this one. I think that's so adorable. And they put out comically large flowers. Then for the smallest orchid of the bunch, we have Paphiopidium micranthum, which is a pretty rare orchid very small. Uh, this one I was given as a, uh, if you can keep it alive, good job, because it wasn't doing so well. And it's actually put out a leaf, that one right there actually, since I got it. And here's the size comparison, this one and the last one. A much smaller, right? <laughs> now I'll just show you compared to the big one. He is very little. <laughs> so there you have it. That is my entire orchid collection. I hope that you enjoyed taking a look at it. I know that I enjoyed sharing it with you. And don't worry, I am doing okay. Uh, I got medications. I found an amazing dermatologist. I'm doing okay. Uh, please leave me your tips for orchids or just my face in the description. Hopefully it doesn't look too bad. I think that the side that's really bad has been in the dark this whole time, so. You can follow me on Instagram if you want more updates about my life and stuff. I have a pretty fun time on Instagram, so if you haven't followed me there, maybe consider checking that out. I also have YouTube memberships, which you can check out as well. But I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs> I've been talking a lot, I use a lot of energy doing this, but it's okay, because I had fun. Thanks for letting me share my orchids with you. These are my newest obsession. They are all I've been buying. And I still love my Hoya, I still have my Begonia, I still have my Philodendron, all of everything else, I love it. The current vibe is orchids, okay? Hopefully you guys are getting into orchids too so we can get into them together. Let me know if you decided to buy any orchids after this video or what your favorite orchids are in your own collection or if you just like the normal grocery store orchids. I have like 10 of those, so I understand. They're just right there and they're so pretty. I'll see you guys in the next houseplant section. Uh, I promise I'm doing okay. I'm not just pretending. Um, I mean, it's definitely hard, but like I'm gonna be okay. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next housemate section. Goodbye. Here's all my orchids just laying out after filming. <laughs> Got a lot of orchid guys. Now I gotta put them all back. <laughs>